Okay, guys. Well, let's go out. Okay, so what we covered um, till last Friday. I mean, we covered RDS and we covered DynamoDB and we covered Elastic Catch. Okay, these are the three things that we covered. There is one more thing that we need to know is Redshift. Okay, so what exactly this Redshift is and why we need to use and what scenarios people will use this. Okay, this will I will cover now. Okay. So, what is Redshift? Fully managed on-demand data warehouse service. What exactly? We have not shared the screen. Exactly. Thank you. I just shared now. <laughs> okay. Thank you, man. So, this is fully managed on-demand data warehouse service. So, why we need a data warehouse? on what scenarios people will need this. This will help you in answering the I mean, architect questions. So when we choose the data warehouse. Yes. Okay. So let's take, I mean, before we go on to the, let's, let's talk about the real-time scenarios. Okay. So why we need a redshift. So what is a data warehouse? I mean, what will happen is, let's take an example of Microsoft, okay? How many departments that ideally, just have a guess, uh, uh, ideally how many department that um, Microsoft will be having? So around 50, 100, 200. Definitely there will be more than 100. It's like we'll talk about some of that. So we'll have a name, people. So like resources, okay, engineers, leads, vice presidents, tech leads, support, all this kind of people, yes. Okay. What if a CAOs or management of Microsoft asking, boss, can I get the report of the employees status uh, since last 10 years? Okay, yeah, you can get from the normal database. Can I get trend of uh, how many people left each year with a percentage? Yeah, okay, then I'll get from this some, some with small um, um, uh, modification, yes, you can get it. So at the same time, what is the finance? I mean, what kind of salaries that we are paying since last 10 years to only this particular department. What is the percentage of growth? So we want to relate now with the salaries, not only for the getting the, uh, I mean, getting the status of engineers, but also related with finance. And also, I mean, somebody might ask how many people left each year um, by quarter by quarter. Can I get a graph since last 10 years? Yeah, definitely. So what is the percentage of hike that we gave in from 2015 to 2017, John? And also relate with that with how many people are left from the organization by quarter by quarter. So this is HR, okay? And also some maybe management wants most. How many sales that we did? We have a sales wing. How many sales that we did? Uh, and I need a quarterly a report. And can we do some predictions of this? These kind of reports uh, people will need. I mean, not for the small organization having one or two departments. They can manipulate and get it. Where you have an, uh, tens of departments, and you want the data analytics or data warehouse, I mean, some reports comparing with multiple departments and getting the data from the last decades and want to do any predictions based on the data. So those kind of scenarios, people will use a data warehouse. So when we are saying it is a data warehouse, ideally we are talking about 
multiple data sources and ideally minimum of terabytes of data. So if you are comparing with multiple data from 10 years and getting the reports, so what is the ideal data that uh, people will have? I mean, this data warehouse need to manage is minimum tera to petabytes of data, minimum terabytes. Right? This is the theory of it. So Microsoft definitely might be having this kind of features and they will set up some uh, data warehouse and ideally having a connection doesn't give the uh, results, keeping the entire data in one place, no. Actually data warehouse is a backend and in front and people will use the BI, business intelligence tools to get the, all the reports and present them in some GUI, pie charts, Bob charts and send the queries to data warehouse and get the information and uh, get the required stats in uh, BA tools. So ideally in front end we'll have a BA tool in back end data warehouse and data warehouse will get the data from the multiple data sources and when you put a request to the BA tool it will since it has to fetch or process the data from different database sources and different databases it has to divide that request into multiple subparts and executed by multiple compute nodes and again combine the result and give it back to the BA tools. So this is what will happen. Okay. Do you understand why we need, I mean, what is a data warehouse and why we need it? Please. Okay, so I'll consider you, you are good. Okay, so <clears throat> so if in the real time scenarios, I mean before this cloud concepts and all that, so ideally it will take minimum of months to build this kind of data. Why it will take these many months to do the capacity planning itself, how many nodes that we need, what is the master node capacity and how it works, I mean it will take a minimum of uh, months to get or build this data warehouse. Okay, so let's look at how it looks like. Okay, if you click on here. See here, the Redshift architecture is looks like it will have a one leader node and will have a multiple compute nodes. What it will happen is, once you, the BA tool sends any request to this and it will distribute that work to the compute nodes. So, there is a catch here. When we are saying compute node, do we need these compute nodes all the times as 10 servers or 20 or 50? So there is a possibility we can increase, change this cluster size from 5 nodes to 10 nodes and 20 nodes and it decreases. So whenever there is a demand you can increase on that day and once your job is completely done over the weekend or over the last quarter of the year then you can shut down these 5 or 10 servers. So this you can scale up and scale down in a Redshift cluster. So this is leader node, compute node and compute nodes. Okay. So Let's look at the next slide. How do you Again, it's a, showing it's a little bit more detail on it. And what exactly it says is, uh, and it do the parallelize and redistributes redistrib everything. So once it has any information, it will pass to this and communicate back with 
leader node and give it back to BA tools. Okay, this is what we discussed. But there's one more thing is we have a 10 gig mesh. What this means? Why this specially mentioned here? So when we are saying it's in a, a data warehouse and we need to deal with terabytes of data or petabytes of data, the data transfer between these machines will be very high. Right? The speed that we need is very high. That's the reason it's they will maintain a minimum of 10 gig of uh, Can you repeat that one more time? Uh, I mean, when we are saying this uh, uh, data warehouse, we are dealing with petabytes of data, so we need to have a um, better communication between better better means it's need a high speed communication between the nodes why because we will transfer the data between these nodes to analyze and give it back the results to the BA tools or later node then it will give to BA tools that's the reason the communication between uh, the nodes in the cluster will have a 10 gig of mesh okay you got it or or not at so ten gigabyte mesh means when it's just a data transfer or something to a yeah just a technical word just leave with mesh but they will maintain a minimum of ten gig of uh, speed between yeah. these instances data transfer between the two instances yes. yes so why we think we need because of high time data yeah because of high volume of when we are talking about data warehouse it's minimum of terabytes right until and unless you are dealing with terabytes and petabytes that no one will build a um, data warehouse tools ideally yeah because we are talking about multiple sources getting the data from the multiple database sources and put it somewhere here and then execute it that's how it will happen I mean for us I mean it's actually database engineers job I mean for us we just need to know how we can build it and give it to the um, uh, engineer I mean uh, database engineer. but we should be knowing why we need this how to create it, what kinds of concept, can we improve the cost saving methodology in it. So those kind of things as in a design and manage we need to know it. But how they will communicate with the BA tools, how they will get the data, how they process it, what is the queries that they need and they will manage it. For, for us we definitely need to understand how this works and why, how we can increase the nodes and these kind of things we should be knowing it. Okay. Let's so, Mona, like when you are saying Amazon Redshift, like are they going to like ready to install uh, <coughs> uh, the tools and all those things, or like we need to install those tools? Like for example, like uh, how we are uh, uh, installing. Uh, Vijay, I mean your voice is not clear. I mean, I don't know how did you connect it, but is it only for me or anybody else is able to hear properly? Yeah, Bano, the, that is not Vijay, that is uh, from Sagar, Suman, I think. Suman, okay. But even I, could, even I couldn't hear properly. Is it? Uh, no, like, what I'm saying is like, so how, we, how like, like is the Redshift is already installing all those BI tools or, or, or do we need to install those things? No, no, BI tools, they won't provide it. Only the back end of this Redshift cluster will be provided. So on top of it, you have to connect the BA tools to this Redshift cluster and you have to give the input of the what are the data sources that they need to get and from where they need to get that's Is there any commands that we can directly install it like ready-madely like uh, like how we install the Tomcat which ones so for example like in the Tomcat you have created the, the instances in the instance it automatically you have used some Command to install the Tomcat, right? Yeah. 
so the same way is there any any commands that we can simply install some kind of tools like a informatica bi tools those kind of things? uh that i'm not sure but we can do it i mean that's all about within the os level i mean we no need to worry about at this okay because uh, in normally even tomcat it's not special with uh, aws the command that i run is a normal unix command it's not with only aws okay. after launching the os and within the os whatever we do that's not part of aws okay okay that's a normal database admin once we have it no 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 like you said right like so automatically when the server is starting you can install predefined you can install some of the tools right? ah okay okay so you want to automate or create an ama of ba tools maybe if they provide any cli installation process for the informatica yes we can do it okay i mean that's all up to us how we can customize we, we have to use either one of the service of it but that we can yeah. okay so let's move on so okay so i mean we also talked about we can increase the redshift cluster from two nodes to three nodes or three to four or four to five what will happen at that time so do we need a downtime or uh, are we going to be having the reports functioning as well so what will happen so in back end while resize while resizing online what will happen is provision a new cluster in back end so it will let's imagine in this scenario we are increasing from three node cluster to four node cluster so what it will provision new cluster entirely new leader node and with four nodes it will build copy the data in parallel from node to node from here to here from here to here it will copy the entire data only charged for the source cluster that means until unless it's completely moved to this cluster it will be charged only at the old cluster because it's not yet uh, completely upright until the migration completed and delete this old cluster this won't be charged so once this is up it will be charged so what will happen once we copy the data and build it so when it will be terminated so at the time of migration it will become the read only that means we can't uh, do any more uh, uh, updates on it but we can get the run the queries again as it and do it that we can do but it will become the read only we can say it's read only because the changes that we are doing should not be copied right so it will be a challenge if something is happening here and again you are doing the copy so it's not a best practice so at the time of resizing this source cluster will become a read only so once the entire data is copied to the new cluster then the point redshift later node the end point will be moved to this one the new one that we created okay this is what will happen when you resize the cluster okay just simply recap it what what exactly it's a redshift is a data warehouse on demand uh fully managed service and for reporting and analysis for consolidating data people will use it and what is the structure of it it will have a leader node and a couple of compute nodes so the the I mean request will be distributed across the com compute nodes and get it back so and it will manage a minimum of 10 gig speed between the nodes and while resizing it will become the read only and create the new cluster with the new number of nodes and it will be charged only source cluster until it's prepared the new cluster uh, or until it's become uh, it's becoming a function i mean it's uh, coming into action 
So then once that uh, completely new cluster is ready, it will switch over. And at the time of switch, I mean, a migration, it will be, it will become the read only. Okay, this is what about Redshift. Let's try to see how it looks like in the console and create a small cluster. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the Redshift dashboards. We are in London. Okay, let's go to the clusters and create a launch cluster. It's it's almost same. I mean, we don't see much difference. And cluster identifying my warehouse. Okay, database name. No. Let's put something here. Bon, is there a way that we can remove all these passwords? Is there a way we can remember all these passwords, username and password? <laughs> oh, good question, man. Is there a way to remember? Mm. Yeah, because like each and every time you are going to give a username and password. Right? Ideally, people will use the tools. There are some password banks, and they will install evil organization. Any bigger organization will have this kind of setups. So they will be keeping all the information in one of the banks. So, for example, if there is, a, uh, if we forget any username and password, then what is the situation? Is there a way that we can reset password? Or we can we can reset the password for any one of it. Do you remember we did for RDS? Somebody asked that question, and when you click modify, you can reset this password. Okay, click modify. Mm. But in the RDS Bano, I noticed one thing: we are can able to reset the password. If you forget the username, it's gone. <laughs> Uh, the way you are only dealing with the RDS instance level updation of the password where you can see only the DB in the identifier name You cannot see the DB username master username mm. But anyhow we can find it in a different ways mm. what I was saying about that right. Okay, DB admin on this continue uh, at least one at I guess I will put D as a caps letter. Okay, now in next screen that it is asking, it's it is expensive, guys. Whenever you create it, make sure you delete it immediately. Uh, last time I forgot to do that, and like it's cost me around. $45 within two days, okay? Just careful while you create and remove in next minute. I mean, within an hour. Okay, so we just launch the cheapest one. DC1 X large, the first one, and it will have a seven EC2 compute units, two virtual two, 10 gig of per node, and 160 GB of SSD storage within it to process all the data so single node see here what are the options that we got single node or multi node so single node will do the both functions if it is very small ideally minimum people will use multi node at least with two nodes okay let's try to create two here and you can go with all defaults I mean decrypt what is the CPU whether it's publicly accessible or not, again, VPC groups, almost same as RDS, nothing else. Okay, continue. Unless you are, yeah, we know it is free to, it's not, thank you. Okay. So, it's all like this, guys. Endpoint is not yet available. It will be creating so we can use this endpoint and username and password 
in BA tools. There is a lot uh, in data warehouse guys. I mean, but we need to understand the basics of it. Is there any multi-age concept? So it's a cluster based, right? So it will use in back in multi-age. So when you're talking about data warehouse, what, what will happen if you lose any one node? What's the impact? Data transfer will be less. Yeah, because we don't lose any production servers, right? So I mean, yeah, we can rerun that code and we can import the data because the sources will be in different places. The data sources will be in different ways that we can put in S3 and we can get it or like that, right? It's not the only source. We are, it's a reproducible data that we'll have in the Redshift cluster. So even if you lose the data, it's, I mean, no, it won't be a problem. So in this case, if you don't want to lose the data, you always has to go multi-node. You should not be in the single node at all. If anything wrongs in the single node, we lose the data. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, okay, so we need to reframe this answer, right? So where will be the source data, ideally? Some made from HR department and some made from data, so even though what will happen if you lose any one of the node? So we we don't keep all the data in here. We can keep in S3. We can integrate this um, Redshift cluster with S3. So whenever you have a data, you can put in S3 bucket. And we can configure the Redshift to always keep the output also in Redshift. I mean, I'll shoot also in S3. The processor data. Oh, really we never save the data in Redshift we just need to we are just using it to process it no no we will save it we we have a flexibility of the saving it but what I'm saying is even though if you lose the Redshift uh, node we can reproduce the data because actual data is somewhere in some other database right so no. it takes a lot of activity but we usually takes care of every time in the RDS or any EC2 we always care about the regions e. multiple availability zones but this is a big one anyhow yeah still yeah. it will it will have the data because that's the reason we have the local database also so I mean what is local the usual practice in real time people will keep the data in S3 and as well as in the redshift yes the process paying results, uh, yeah, S3 is cheap, man. I mean, when compared to the results, I mean, people won't care about paying in S3. So how much is charges? 1 GB, 100 GB, 1 cent. How much is S3 cost? It's very negligible. In a real time, S3 is very, very, very reasonable storage. Yes, the people will use. Even you can use it. For as our own purpose, we can use only S3. You can keep all your family photos and keep it secure. So, ideally, you never lose any data. So, this is what Redshift is, guys. So, any questions on this? This is the end point. We just need to give this info to our uh, BA tools 
candidates and they will manipulate it. Can you show, actually I had a question, can you show the connection uh, of S3 to Redshift or SQS or Q service to the Redshift? I read some articles saying that by using the SQS service we will pull the data and send it to the Redshift. We can do some yes, yes. At least the part. Yeah. Uh, I don't know man. I don't know how we can do that. Okay, S3 Shift. to Redshift. Yes, 3 to Redshift uh, we can configure it. Um, database performance queries. But you don't know in the reverse way? Sorry, you don't know? Like you were saying that you don't know in the reverse way? Redshift 2 to Redshift 2? Uh, EC3. EC2. Yeah, EC2, yeah. So I don't see that requirement, right? If you have a database on it, or if you have a database servers like MSS scale, some HR application on it, yes, we can integrate with this. That also is there. But it's uh, it's very in-depth of it. So, uh, even I remember that is where this option is because I I never worked with this Okay, what I'll do is I'll find out the way, I mean, how we can configure this with cluster in S3, and I will let you know how we can integrate it with S3, because I never did this, so let me find that. Yeah, meanwhile, I will also do for SQS too. <laughs> 